a humanoid robot with human anatomy has shocked the internet. The Meta Corporation plans to create its own humanoid robot. China aims to take the seafloor, and Elon Musk intends to take the gaming industry. There is another tech news in this episode. You're on the World 5.0 channel. This is tech news. Let's go. Let's kick off our broadcast with a truly hyped up story. The startup Clone Robotics has released a new video that's taken the internet by storm. The clip, posted on February 2nd, 2025, showcases the latest version of the protoclone robot hanging on ropes and moving its arms and legs. The site has sparked mixed reactions, ranging from delight to mild unease. For those out of the loop, the startup Clone Robotics was founded in 2019 with the goal of creating robots as close to humans as possible. Its brainchild, Protoclone, is a synthetic android with over 200 degrees of freedom and around 500 sensors, including tactile and inertial ones. Its movements are powered by about 1,000 artificial muscles made of myofiber, which according to the developers, match animal muscles in weight, power, speed, strength, and energy efficiency. The robot skeleton mirrors the human body structure, including 206 bones, with joints connected by artificial tissues, though the exact details of the ligament design remain unclear. The skeleton is made from strong polymers printed on a 3D printer, making it relatively affordable to produce. The robot is controlled through a complex system resembling a nervous system, allowing for instant muscle responses. The position of its limbs in space is tracked using four depth cameras in the head, 70 inertial sensors in the joints, and 320 tactile sensors across the body. Muscle control boards are placed along the spine, while the head houses an NVIDIA Jetson Tor processor running a visual motor model developed by the startup. The robot's vascular system is a complex hydraulic network powered by a 500-watt electric pump, roughly the size of a human heart. This pump circulates fluid to operate the muscles and provide cooling, making Protoclon stand out among modern robots. What do you think of this development? Let us know in the comments. Does it impress you or freak you out? Meanwhile, Japanese scientists from the University of Tokyo and Waseda University have made a revolutionary leap in biohybrid robotics by creating the world's first full-sized arm powered by living muscles grown in a lab. This breakthrough opens new possibilities for medicine and technology, promising to rethink approaches to prosthetics and the study of the human body. According to the University of Tokyo's portal, the biohybrid arm can move objects and perform a scissor gesture. The researchers use thin strands of lab-grown muscle tissue called mumuta, multiple muscle tissue actuators. This achievement marks a key step toward developing larger biohybrid limbs, aiding in drug testing on muscle tissue and expanding the potential of biohybrid robotics to mimic real forms. Plus, thanks to its unique structure, these muscles are not subject to necrosis. The arm is made of a 3D printed plastic base with tendons of human muscle tissue that move the fingers. Until now, biohybrid devices have typically been much smaller, about one centimeter long, or limited to simpler, single joint movements. In contrast, this biohybrid arm is 18 centimeters long and has multi-jointed fingers that can be moved individually to perform gestures or together to handle objects. Creating the Mumutas enabled us to overcome our biggest challenge, which was to ensure enough contractile force and length in the muscles to drive the hand's large structure said Professor Shoji Takeuchi from the University of Tokyo. Interestingly, synthetic muscles can also get tired. While not entirely surprising, it was interesting that the contractile force of the tissues decreased and showed signs of fatigue after 10 minutes of electrical stimulation, yet recovered within just one hour of rest. Observing such a recovery response, similar to that of living tissues, in engineered muscle tissues was a remarkable and fascinating outcome said Takeuchi. And while the arm can currently only function in a special fluid and has many limitations, the development team remains optimistic and believes the technology has a bright future. Let's wish the Japanese team luck in their discoveries and move on. Let's head from Japan straight to Norway. On February 21, 2025, One X Technologies unveiled the Neo Gamma robot positioned as the world's first consumer humanoid. This next-generation NEO model is designed to be affordable, safe, and useful for home use. Previously, NEO robots, including the beta version, were tested in the homes of one X Technologies employees, as CEO Bernd Boernik mentioned in an interview with The Robot Report a year ago. NEO Gamma has received an updated design that makes it friendlier and safer. A new protective knit nylon suit made using Japanese Shimaseki technology maintains the robot's performance while preventing children's fingers or pets' paws from accidentally getting caught in its joints. 
With the help of artificial intelligence, the developers have also greatly expanded NeoGamma's capabilities. First, the robot is equipped with a multi-purpose body controller operating at 100 Hz, trained using reinforcement learning based on human motion capture data. This provides near-human mobility, allowing it to handle household tasks as well as a person. Second, engineers at One X Technologies have trained a visual manipulation model that recognizes and interacts with a wide range of objects in various conditions, including unfamiliar environments. Thanks to this, NeoGamma can perform actions remotely controlled based on sensor data. Important note, all capabilities shown so far are achieved through teleoperation, as stated in the original video. And finally, the manufacturing company has developed its own large language model, enabling the robot to hold natural conversations and use gestures. This turns NeoGamma into an autonomous companion capable of communicating without external control. In addition, NeoGamma has become quieter. Its noise level is now reduced to about that of a refrigerator. All of this is detailed on the manufacturer's website. So, NeoGamma represents a significant step forward in the development of consumer humanoid robots, making it a promising candidate to become the first widely available household assistant. We look forward to seeing such helpers in every home, but for now, let's move on. Meanwhile, Zuckerberg is also trying to keep up with the humanoid robot market. Zuckerberg's brainchild, Meta, is launching a new division within its reality labs. This division will focus on developing humanoid robots powered by artificial intelligence. To speed up the creation of versatile androids capable of assisting with household chores and tackling logistics tasks, Meta is allocating an impressive $65 billion. Unlike most competitors, Meta won't start by developing its own hardware platform, the robot's physical body, since building high-quality mechanical structures is no longer considered particularly challenging thanks to modern technology. What truly makes a robot useful is its software. That's where Zuckerberg's company will focus its efforts, aiming to create intelligence and adaptability that enable machines to handle complex tasks. To test its software, Meta plans to use ready-made robotic platforms from well-known manufacturers like Unitary Robotics and Figure AI. This approach will allow Meta to concentrate on the software side without spending time and resources building hardware from scratch. The project will be led by a team of 100 highly skilled specialists. They'll work not only on developing universal software, but also on creating key components like various sensors and computing modules. If the project succeeds, Meta plans to use these technologies for its own robots and supply them to other companies, potentially opening up a new and promising business avenue. According to Meta's estimates, humanoid robots will become widely available within a few years. Interestingly, Mark Zuckerberg shares Elon Musk's view, who has long argued that robots are the future of the tech industry. Both leaders agree, human-like machines will fundamentally transform our lives, from household tasks to the global economy. So, if everything goes according to plan, we might soon see versatile androids in action, not just at home, but potentially in the most unexpected areas of our lives. This kind of tech progress is right up our alley. What about you? Speaking of Elon Musk, in our last episode, we covered the news about the release of Grok 3 and, in particular, its ability to create games. It seems Elon Musk has spotted huge potential in this feature. Make games great again, the businessman wrote on his X, announcing plans to start his own gaming studio with XAI. It's not hard to guess that the studio's main highlight will be AI. However, this idea raises a ton of questions. It's unclear what exactly this AI gaming studio will consist of, considering that, yes, AI has appeared in many fields, but it has been rejected for widespread use in games by both gamers and developers. From this, it's uncertain how many game creators would even want to join an Elon-led AI gaming studio. And in general, Musk also wrote, too many game studios that are owned by massive corporations and coming from him, doesn't that sound strange? Musk himself is the richest person in the world. XAI raised $6 billion in its Series B funding round and could be valued at $40 billion. By definition, wouldn't an XAI gaming studio be run by a massive corporation? Overall, the project raises a ton of questions. Let us know in the comments. Would you like to play a game created by AI? And now we move on to other Musk projects. His brainchild, The Boring Company, is preparing to create a network of underground tunnels in Dubai through which Tesla cars will operate. 
This was announced at the end of February by the organization itself and Dubai's Roads and Transport Authority. The plan involves building a tunnel system spanning 17 kilometers in the Persian Gulf city-state, connecting all the major transportation hubs throughout the city. In the first phase of the project, 11 stations will be established, capable of transporting up to 20,000 passengers per hour. But this is just the beginning. The Boring Company intends to expand the system over time, so that in the future it can serve five times more people per hour, at least 100,000. And although the exact timeline for the launch of the project in Dubai remains a mystery, one thing is certain. It will be the Boring Company's first project outside the United States. The company's other projects are based in Las Vegas and Hawthorne, California. Of course, all this is somewhat different from the Hyperloop that Musk unveiled in 2013. Back then, he proposed a concept of low-pressure tubes in which passenger capsules could travel at speeds of up to unbelievable 1,200 kilometers per hour. Sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, doesn't it? The Boring Company was born in 2017 exactly from that bold idea. Would you like to ride comfortably through such a tunnel during rush hour bypassing all the traffic jams? Okay, let's move on. From underground news to underwater news, let's wrap up our episode with another stunning Chinese initiative. China continues to amaze the global community with its ambitious projects in science and technology. One such endeavor is the construction of a deep-sea research center in the South China Sea at a depth of 2,000 meters. This project was launched at the beginning of the year, with its completion scheduled for 2030. The research center promises to become one of the most complex and technologically advanced underwater structures, comparable to the International Space Station in terms of cost and scientific value. The station will explore methane-rich hydrothermal vents, focusing on methane flows, biodiversity, tectonic activity, and energy exploration. Scientists will assess methane emissions to analyze the climate, examine deep-sea species for medical purposes, investigate geological movements for disaster prediction, and analyze methane hydrates as an energy source. The station is designed for long-term stays, accommodating six researchers on missions lasting up to one month. The center will be equipped with an advanced life support system and an integrated monitoring network. It will operate in coordination with unmanned underwater vehicles, surface ships, and seabed observatories. According to reports by Business Today, China is also developing an underwater fiber-optic network, which will further strengthen its maritime infrastructure, research capabilities, and communication. The project could enhance China's geopolitical influence by providing access to new energy resources and improving control over underwater territories. Let's hope that, beyond political disputes, this project will bring significant benefits to humanity in the fields of medicine and natural disaster prediction. That's all for now, dear friends. How did you like this roundup? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget about our Telegram channel. See you soon.